Hello and welcome to a new chapter of Indie Talks. Today we are going to meet a young independent watch brand that was born in the middle of the COVID uh, pandemic in March 2020. It, it is characterized by a classical inspired design. The brand, since the, its launch, has had a great success among uh, collectors and media. Today we are going to know Furlan Murray in depth and we have with us at Indie Talks Andrea Furlan. Andrea, Welcome, and a pleasure to have you with us. Gracias, Alfonso. Uh, welcome, Thanks. and thank you, because I am a little bit uh, Spanish as well, from Barcelona. Oh, uh, the family is from the south, but they moved to Barcelona, mm-hmm. and also Italian from the uh, farther part. Yeah. Okay, so it's, great. Um, perfect. For our viewers and followers, who is Andrea Furlan? How did you get started into watchmaking and... What was your previous experience before getting mm-hmm. involved in the Furlan Mari project? Mm-hmm. So I always wanted to do um, a creative project, creative um, um, uh, future uh, in the in the design. For example, my father was a designer, technical designer, so he teaches me how to sketch by hand in the old way, you know, not like with the computer, but really like with the ink and um, old pencil, etc. It was really great to to start with that since my very young age. And um, after that, I always wanted to do like car design, but also um, a jewelry product and watch design. So I always wanted to 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 follow this um, path during my uh, studies. So I did like general studies in um, mostly like biology, mathematics, etc. But then um, I rapidly wanted to go into the design um, studies. So I did industrial design at um, um, ECAL school. It's, it's in, a, in, in French, it's called ECAL, E-C-A-L. It's a university of industrial design. So we did uh, snowboard, ski, uh, furniture, um, lamps, and interior design as well. It was a great um, experience and background for the for the also for the future of what we do now at Furlan Marie, because uh, we we've been able to do 3D, 2D as well, photography and graphic design as well as typography. So it was very large, and um, it helped me a, a lot to to build uh, also the brand uh, after. Um, um, since 15 years old, I did a lot of uh, internship in the watch industry. I begin with uh, um, Hublot and the old company of Hublot. Um, Jean Claude Beaver was there, and when then, it was uh, MDM, right? Um, it was in Lyon already, uh-huh. oh, uh, okay. the old building before the new one. Just mm-hmm. it was a big tower in Lyon um, uh, before I think MDM, and um, yeah, I started with uh, it was my first internship, and thanks to to people like uh, Jean Claude Beaver or Marine Le Menu in the in the watch industry, they they opened doors uh, instead of closing doors for young people. So it was um, my first um, yeah my first feeling with the watch industry. Then I did um, at um, uh, Sarkar. It was a um, um, a very um, it's it's a famous brand in Asia. Uh, they are based in Geneva. But they do mostly jewelry design, and I also did that Chopard. Um, internship there it was great because they teach me how to sketch by hand with the paintings as well so you could um, yeah i could design some diamonds as well uh, watches and pendants it was great to experiment this kind of um, different art um, and i also did with hg3 complication with uh, york isaac um, designer uh, and teaching me a, a lot about perspective as well how to really um, sketch by hand. So I had this kind of um, background since my 15 years old. And um, then right after the studies in, in product design, um, I did an internship with Dominique Renault, um, mm-hmm. former of, um, he was the co-founder of Renault and Papi, the movement manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, I think it was 2000, 11 or 15, 2015, um, he, he had um, decided to, to, to a new brand called Dominique Renault with a totally new concept 
of watches. It was incredible to to be just four in the team uh, with uh, Dominic next to me and um, engineer as well. So every day I could learn and um, have this kind of discussion about research and development, technical, um, technical ha having this kind of technical knowledge about uh, watch industry, but not only m just simple movement, it was like something more, um, yeah, very deep into the watch, um, um, watch uh, research because um, they totally reinvented the balance wheel, etc. So uh, it was uh, great to connect with this kind of um, <clears throat> approach. And um, I could do like, uh, yeah, 3D renderings as well with, with him and uh, designing some of the screws as well and balance wheel and the components. So something that for our first job, you, you don't really do in other companies normally. So it was uh, great to, to begin with that. And um, just after four years, I decided to go to Asia and Los Angeles to learn about e-commerce, but also mass production process. And uh, in order to, to merge those two worlds into the high-end watchmaking industry, research, technical, but also mass production, because I thought at that time it was a there was um, a gap to fulfill in terms of um, that there was um, a bridge that we can do uh, between the high-end watch industry and the mass production uh, uh, watch industry. So um, basically it's that for Lan Marie that, uh, um, that and um, at that time also um, begin to to know uh, Ahmad uh, Al Mari, my uh, co-founder. So we decided together to 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 begin the the, the company, and I will um, I think uh, I will um, uh, tell you um, about that more later. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Do you, you are too young, but do you remember your first watch? Yeah, it was um. So basically, the first first watch was the Flick Flack from uh, oh, Sweet yeah. Salmon, you know. But uh, my first real uh, watch was um, a Swatch uh, chronograph that mm -hmm. I received um, at Christmas. Mm -hmm. My parents gave, gave me that. And it was um, a chronograph, black dial, three counters with um, a leather strap. It was the first like technical uh, mm -hmm. uh, chrono uh, that I had. Um, and I keep have that in, in my, um, in my uh, home today so i enjoy to, to wear it mm -hmm. then we were talking about how uh, furla mari uh, was born how mm -hmm. do you met hamad al mari and how do you decided to 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 build your own brand from from scratch so it was in 2021 it was uh, just in the middle of the pandemic covid we had um, hamad um, that i met in geneva um, the the same vision of doing making some bridge between um, high end watchmaking industry and more accessible product, and then at that time we had in mind to do um, a perpetual calendar, but uh, he, it was too complicated, too many investments, um, too much investment um, at that time. So we decided to create a, a brand from scratch with um, almost zero budget marketing was almost zero at the beginning. So we decided to find solution. In Los Angeles, I heard about Kickstarter, the um, crowdfunding campaign. And uh, people told me you need a lot of money to, to invest, to do advertising, to, to bring something, uh, to, to, to bring people uh, uh, in, in Kickstarter. But uh, we had almost zero, we decided to Oh, make this brand uh, from scratch. So we designed um, a watch that was inspired by the work of uh, François Borgel, which was the um, um, famous case maker from the past that made the case from uh, Patek to Movado to, to order. And um, uh, you can find um, the 40s, 50s um, details like the engraved pusher or um, decagonal case pack that you can find, um, yeah, you, you could find that at that time with uh, Franck Muller, Roger Dubuis as well. And it was interesting to to have this kind of reflection around the craftsmen from the past and um, to 
tell that to a more um, to to a community to, so to create the community around that product and around that story and it was the the beginning of the of the the story we decided to to use kickstarter because it was a a good tool to mm -hmm. to bring people together and um but the kickstarter will not help you to to make advertising it's not the magical uh, no yeah. touch uh, you need That's a lot I of have work heard, that it, that yeah. the kickstarter and, is not helping a lot yeah and people think um, it's very easy you can in two weeks um, put your product and, and that's it uh, no you need almost six eight months before um, us we we did that in five to six months before it was already short but uh, with uh, we decided to bring people um, like in instagram first to tease the people with the teaser on Instagram to to talk with the community, uh, we had um, some contacts with the with the collector sphere. So we had to discuss with them. We did some prototypes, around ten prototypes that we decided to show to the people. And just um, we dis we say to them, we told them, we just want honest feedback, critical feedback, and that's it. We just want this for the beginning. And they loved the watch. Some uh, wanted to keep the watch with them. So even journalists, sometimes they didn't want to, to send back the watch. Yeah. So we, we made a journal, like paper, newspaper, with the watch. And it was our press kit. Um, and um, yeah, we shared with that. The, it, it helped to, to, to bring the people together. And thanks to that, it has made... Um, uh, uh quite a huge uh, noise um at the beginning because with yeah with zero budget marketing we we received some articles in the new york times vanity fair or jq and, and other revolution and um, time tide as well so it, they were one of the first with one and one so many many uh, people came to 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 spread the word and and with the accessible price point um, strategy we had wanted to yeah to bring to bring those kind of details from the collectible watches and also stories around the um, craftsmen and, and um watch industry from the 40s 50s to the to a more accessible price point okay great how was the division of the roles between you and hamad yeah so hamad is um is based in um, saudi arabia uh, with the family from Qatar as well, Doha, and um, he always travel in the um, in the Middle East. To he's basically the 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 voice of Fernand Marie in the Middle East and the eyes as well, and uh, he is constantly constantly in um, with with collectors there, um, making some events and um, private um, uh, meeting with the young people, young collectors um, trying to to make some bridge and and discussion um, with 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 them so for example now he is in uh, Saudi Arabia at the Saudi fashion week and he will try to he will um, discuss about the brand there because Saudi is a young market for us and they represent uh, yeah they are the, the the buyers are under 35 years old so it's really young and um, they buy only accessible watches from us, less than $1,000. So it's very interesting to be also online as a digital brand because we can analyze that um, um, from all over the world. We can say, okay, now we have that amount of people in um, in Middle East, that amount of people in the US, the US like this kind of color or um, that kind of diameter, and, uh, and the Middle East um, are more into this color. And um, it helped. Uh, it helped us a lot uh, every day to exchange between yeah. tradition and uh, uh, the, their own tradition, but also the um, to to make a better strategy. Mm -hmm. You have said that you have a, a very low age buyers and followers. That it, I think is one of the main problems for all the mainstream and well-established brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do you see the, the, the market nowadays and the trends because the, the market is changing yeah. and it's mm -hmm. important for the brands to attract new generation because we are quite old. We have bought yeah. watches and now there are new generation coming and as you have said, you have a, 
a nice price, uh, quality price range, then how do you see the, the situation nowadays? So in um, what is interesting with our brand, it's like a 360 degree brand. You have, um, we begin with accessible price points, make a quartz collection that we, we still have in the collection because we begin with that. Um, and um, we thought that um, only young people uh, would, uh, would buy our watches. But in fact, with the Kickstarter, we had a lot of collectors and, and very important collectors in the watch industry that bought our product as well and keep having them in the, in the collection, traveling with the watch on the wrist. And they keep sending me a message of uh, happiness because they love the, um, that kind of product. So it's interesting to see that we can have young collectors, young people who also doesn't know a lot about watch industry, but also very important collectors in that kind of price range. And uh, we then moved into a mechanical uh, line with um, it's about uh, 1,000 to 3,000 Swiss francs range. And, um, and uh, also now a technical line with the perpetual calendar. It will be less than 10,000 Swiss francs for the first series. Um, and so it's interesting to see that young people, young collectors can also follow us into the technical line but also very um, important collectors can can access the, um, those time pieces. Uh, so it, it's interesting to see uh, that we, it's not, uh, it's not um, how do you say, that there is no segmentation in the yeah. uh, clear segmentation in, in our brand. So we have a clear segmentation of our collection, which is Mecha Quartz, Mechanical and Technical, but we don't have a clear segmentation of the, of the um, customer. And that's, mm -hmm. that's interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't you think also, like, I'm, I, I follow a lot of uh, Kickstarter and the brands that are uh, new in, in, in that platform, but don't you think that there is a new kind of collectors that are more into brands that are bringing something fresh and new in terms of design? And it's not so important what is inside the heart of, of the watch. The movement, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now it's more and more. Um, um, how do you say? Um, people, I think. What I could see with the Mecha Quartz, we use the Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. It's a mechanical quartz, but the story was um, that um, it was invented in Switzerland. I have uh, here a Mecha Quartz chronograph from Jeger Le Coultre. Um, and uh, it was one of the, the first. Uh, it was invented in Switzerland, but also in Japan quite at the same time. And um, it's interesting to see that uh, it's also part of the Swiss history. Mm -hmm. So it's important to say that to the people. But we thought that to use the Japan movement, uh, the collectors will not follow us and, and so with the first Kickstarter series. But in fact, it was the contrary. The, um, People, um, collectors followed us and, and, and wore the, the, the Mecha Quartz movement. It's interesting to see that, that, that trends evolve as well. And there are more, uh, there is some people that are really movement focused. So they will be more happy to see a mechanical, automatical movement from us, technical development, such as the perpetual calendar. But we also have this kind of, uh, um, collectors that are more into they have everything and uh, they want to experiment also something new so they don't uh, yeah they, they don't really care if, if there is a mecha quartz or or, or japan movement or chinese movement or mm -hmm. and, and it's more soft in this kind of trends mm -hmm. what do you think is the dna of furla mari uh, and what sets you apart from the rest and what are your inspiration when you are designing the, the watches? So we are um, really uh, story focused, um, focusing on, on stories in the watch in watch industry. It can be a, a, a story around a craftsman, um, a case maker, a buckle maker, or um, a designer from the past. And we have to twist it into with the modern, um, with our, our eyes and uh, in a modern way. Uh, the Disco Volante, for example, uh, the, this one, the Disco Volante, we did from 
it was a few months ago, uh, we decided to, 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 to begin with an aesthetic from the 30s. The, one of the first um, Disco Volante was, were in the 30s. I have one of them. It was a really, really small um, um, Disco Volante. Then in the 70s, 80s, um, he saw um, Audemars Piguet made a one with Gérald Janta. And then a little bit was forgotten a little bit. So this kind of shape uh, was forgotten and we wanted to make um, uh, to put a modern twist on it. So for example, we added Luminova inside, we made it bigger and we sketched our own, own case uh, with many, many shapes, many details. And Florent Marie is that, I, all about details, um, all about, uh, cr basically it's crafted with care and designed for details. It's the, um, the true sentence we have. And we really um, have no compromise between uh, the mecha quartz line or the technical line. The, the, we, we care about every detail, even inside the watch. You can see some perlage or curved hands. Um, it was uh, yeah by the past and it was like this. People uh, uh, finish uh, really well the, the inside, but also the outside. So we tend to, 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 to that. Um, that uh, vision. So for and Marie, is, yeah, it's all about details, and we 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 always uh, um, try to strive for perfection. But we know that we will never arrive. But we we tend to that. Okay. Uh, On accessible your, price point. Uh, yeah. What is uh, approximately your uh, yearly production? So um, yearly, um, I will have the right number at the end of the year, but. For example, those three years we did uh, more than twenty six thousand watches in um, in three years, and, and for the first year we did around twelve to fifteen thousand uh, watches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. we begin uh, alone in Geneva, and mm -hmm. Ahmad was in uh, in the Middle East, and um, for two approximately one and a half year, uh, I was alone in Geneva, and then now we. We just have a small team uh, of seven people, so we try to fulfill the demands um, as much as we can. But it's also there is a, a time to to slow down a little bit and focus on on uh, on the team and um, um, have this kind of structured uh, on the brand as well. Mm -hmm. How do you see the, the future of Furlan Marie? What are your plans for the, let's say, five years? Oh, yeah. Yeah. New watches, new complications? Can you tell us a hint about yeah. what is coming? So um, we can see that with, um, for example, um, a secular perpetual calendar we did for only watch. Mm -hmm. It was a huge project. And also it was a a challenge for us because um, we don't have any watchmakers that work full full for us. Uh, we worked with Dominique Chrono, Julien Tixier, and also Sebastian, who help us um, every day for for um, for that and challenging ourselves. And, and basically, they, have, they they all yeah. have the, their own brand, Renault Yeah, Tixier. Renault Tixier. <laughs> Renault Tixier. But uh, they are also consultants, and they can. Um, we continue to work together. We have several complications to uh, right. that we we've developed together, um, and it 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 um, the secular perpetual calendar only took us one year to develop from the from the ID to the patent and to the unique piece for only watch it very short to do uh, that what kind has of. Uh, just for our viewers to know more about the perpetual calendar, what has a special this, uh, this yeah. watch? Basically, it's one of the most simple in the world because we, instead of having thousands or hundreds of components, we 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 had um, we we made it to twenty five components for the secular perpetual calendar. It's mm -hmm. a module that um, Dominique and Julian developed, patented as well, um, and everything is not um everything can be removable it's like modular system mm -hmm. so you can remove uh, the secular components and you can do a perpetual calendar for example or remove the perpetual part and do an annual calendar within the same um assembling kit mm -hmm. um, more or less 
So it's very easy to, in terms of production as well, <clears throat> assembling and security of um, assembly and uh, fiability. And so we developed the, the secular perpetual calendar that we then uh, change it to, to do an, a perpetual calendar for the public and for the GPHG um, uh, Grand Prix d'Horlogerie de Genève this year. We have a final, we are, we have this uh, perpetual calendar as a finalist, which is the same module that we developed for only watch and adapted for the, for the, for our public piece. But it's very different because when you do a unique piece, you, you can, um, it's like basic, basically a prototype. So you can really think differently. And now what the, that we have um, a public piece, we need to think in more into a mass production. So we had to change our process and um, to also find a, a team that mm -hmm. can help on that. So Sebastian, I mean, we have now a little atelier in um, in Geneva that we can um, develop some special pieces and a special project. We have already a, a new patent that we fulfilled uh, last year uh, for um, a new complication that will be uh, that we will be able to do in one year or two years. And uh, then we have also two more complications um, to do in the technical line. So it's more a little bit more pricey because there is more you know, hand finish, etc. But also we have a, a, an accessible complication, very accessible complication that we developed. And it will be, I think, for next year or 2026 ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you are offering that perpetual calendar at a very interesting price if you compare it to other brands. Yeah, and there is a sapphire crystal dial. Uh, you can see the um, everything is moving, so there is no pressure on the on the case like uh, most most of the perpetual calendar. There is only one rocker, like a minute repeater button at six o'clock. You can go to the right or on the left to to control the um, and to re uh, change the dates of the perpetual calendar. There is hand finish on the module. The module is only 1.15 millimeter, so it's really thin, and we can adapt that to almost all the movements in the market. So we, we wanted to adapt that on a La Joupere movement because it makes more sense for us. We use that movement already, and when we order a certain volume per year of movement, we can adapt this movement to the perpetual uh, calendar, and we can have a quite um, more healthy um, uh, way of uh, you know um, um thinking how we can use the movement not having many supplier of movement but having mostly one or two it's more healthy for for us uh, with the small team to to manage that mm -hmm. um, and also there is a rotor behind the perpetual calendar in full rose gold so and that for less than ten thousand euro so Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's interesting you, as a um, technical. Mm -hmm. tech, you, you have know, technical mentioned one. the the GPHG that uh, you have two nominations for this uh, year, but you also received the horological revelation for your first mm -hmm. creation. What did it mean to a young brand to have the recognition mm -hmm. of your peers? So it was um, honestly we didn't uh, know it will it will be like this because only six months after the Kickstarter, just uh, right after we started the fulfillment, so I think we were in the middle of the fulfillment of the watches uh, in a logistic way, and uh, uh, I was uh, almost alone in Geneva to to optimize that with DHL and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So after six months, we received we received that price. I think with Ahmad, we didn't uh, realize a lot about that, and but it was um, almost magical to it was uh, like um, a step for the brand in terms of image. And um, what I think it's interesting the GPG for a young brand because you can all the, the brand will travel all around the world, and um, uh, yeah, basically it would it's a great um, way to 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 show your piece to to many other people because if you are one to five in a team as a, as a small brand a small young brand you cannot travel like this every time and, and so it's very interesting to have also the the feedback of um, 
of other um, people. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's um, challenging as well. Uh, it's uh, yeah, for sure. a little bit scary to, to keep on, you have to that, keep on the, doing the things yeah. in a in a right way, no? Yeah, yeah you have to 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 be uh, ready <laughs> <laughs> to keep on pushing. Yeah. Because uh, we received the orological revelation, and we had only um, made the uh, mecha quartz uh, uh, at that time. So for us, it was even more challenging to say, okay, now we need to to, to not prove, but to 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 show to the people that we can uh, arrive on um, something interesting. So that's why right after we did the mechanical line and the technical line, and I think. Um, Yeah, I think it was interesting for the people to see the, um, the evolution and mm -hmm. not the evolution of, of price because we keep the same structure of the of the price. We don't change totally the, the like uh, we don't remove the past, but we we keep um, doing what what we we started with. Okay, great. What are your main markets nowadays? So it's Half half between Middle East and uh, USA. USA is more about mechanical watches, uh, more price price point more more high, and um, all about yeah Saudi Arabia, Qatar. I would say Kuwait and, and UAE. They are more into um, watches that are more accessible. Maybe it's because we don't have a physical boutique. We will see. We will open uh, in in Saudi Arabia. And it will be interesting to see if this will change. Uh, if, because we have um, a physical product, maybe people will be able to 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 be more confident uh, when, when they pay a little bit more uh, for the mechanical watches. So let's see uh, if this will change. Um, and then we have also China that is growing um, month by month. Uh, we decided to make um, China, um, full and marine China on Timo, Little Red Book, WeChat, it's uh, those platform only digitally. So we are present uh, digitally there. And uh, we will open um, uh, our first showroom, uh, the one in Geneva we have, but we will open a showroom in, in Tokyo um, mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Um, yeah, in the middle of Ginza, Tokyo. So it will And be interesting planning, to have the not fact. planning to be into multi brand uh, boutiques. Yes, we we have also um, a work with Time Tide in Australia that have a multi brand uh, store showroom. Um, and uh, they will open in London. I think it's already open now. They they open in London, in the center of London. So we can have um, a presence there. Um, and we will work in Saudi Arabia, we will work with a multi brand store. But we don't want something really big, you know. We want to work with uh, also. We like to work with a small team um, that can give the right message to the the, the people. And this is the most important thing for us: is to give the right message, to explain the right stories um, for for everyone. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, Europe? Is Europe uh, losing importance and? Uh... Le less because, important than because all the brands are getting more yeah. into Asia, USA, and and Middle yeah. East, and Europe is yeah. lost. <laughs> we 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 sell um, quite a lot in Switzerland, France, uh, Italy, but uh, we will um, try with some um, some multi brand boutique as well. Some of them in France uh, next year. Also Switzerland, we will have a, a boutique in the center of Geneva. Um, and we will see if, if this will um, will have an impact. So it will be interesting as we begin digitally, and uh, now we expand also physically just a little bit. And it's interesting to see the the change if this has an impact on the on yeah. the sales, because maybe a European people like to see our products. Um, I think we see that at at certain price point. From our brand people, we receive more message to test the watch to see first. So we will um, expand the pop-up store or uh, events as well. Then planning to do something in Spain? <laughs> yes, in Barcelona as well. We Madrid or Madrid or Barcelona. We need to 
to do more and more there. We have some interest also in Mexico. Okay, great, yeah. great. Uh, what is the Furlamari assembling experience? Ah, yes. Can, can we create yeah. uh, our own pièce unique? Yes. So, um, well, not pièce unique, but it kind of. It's ah. uh, with um, like two years, one and a half years ago. So, the the strategy we have to finish uh, uh, the watch also inside and outside, even if we close the case back, because uh, the watches we begin, we closed the case back, but it was also perlage finish inside. The movement was not the standard one, but more with perlage as well, uh, Côte de Genève, so quite high finish for the, that price point. And even if we close the case back, we decided to to have in, in mind, we, we had in mind to, to open the, the assembling experience. So we started with our partner in uh, Geneva called Initium. They are in the old town of Geneva, right next to uh, the, the workshop of atelier of um, Recep Recepi, uh, Krivia. We are just neighbors and people can um, choose the watch they want to assemble. Um, from the from the mechanical line, for example, this one here is yeah. the salmon sector. People right now can choose between three watches. We will open the range um, as we have new watches, and they can have a two three hours um, workshop with the watchmaker. And they can have a little bit of um, history about the watchmaking in general. Then they can participate and assemble the not all the movement because it's mm -hmm. very complicated and it will take hours but, will, um, will not, it will not work <laughs> and, and also for security <laughs> this and warranty but they can assemble the, the rotor they can assemble the hands um, the they can uh, the, the case as well case back and then the strap and uh, it's like a two three hours course and then uh, mm -hmm. they wear the watch and live with the watch on the wrist so it's very interesting to to um, I didn't find that in the other brands. So no. you don't go to a boutique and say, I want to assemble this watch or that watch, yeah. please. So it's interesting. And we will replicate that in a few cities. They just open in Paris. So we will uh, be able to, to propose that in Paris. But for logistic reason, you have to, you have to ship a lot of tools and you have to ship the, the bench of the watchmaker. Oh, yeah. So they just developed, um, um, bench that you can ship um, so yes it's um step by step it will take some time but um, it's a very nice and interesting experience for for us um, to propose that for many people and people came to geneva to like for a wedding and um, for a wedding um, gift or for with the parents um, mm -hmm. they assemble together with the children it's um it's nice because you create a link between the product and the people and then you you don't want to 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 to, to sell your watch it's it's your yeah. watch that you've made so yeah it's a very strong mm -hmm. my last question if you were not wearing a furla mari what brand and model would you wear yeah. so <laughs> i love to I, I love vintage watches and mm -hmm. i'm not one of them uh, for example if i need to choose an independent um, no I limit. Choose, uh, yeah, no, no limit. limit I, would, <laughs> yeah, I would choose the MBNF um, Legacy Perpetual Calendar because it's very open and uh, one of my favorite. I love. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think it's my favorite perpetual calendar, and I love the team um, Max yeah. as well, and all the, the team there, mm. super nice. So, like, there is more um, a strong link between the brand. But um, it's a little bit big for my wrists, so maybe um, I would also choose the vintage pieces because I love uh, shaped watches, um, vintage um, brands that are not anymore there. For example, Solville uh, or Paul Bure or other um, brands like this. So I like to to um, to go to the market as well in Geneva, mm -hmm. or uh, with some of my friends. They they have some special uh, piece to show, show me. So I'd like to focus on, on bracelets, uh, mesh bracelet from the past or mm -hmm. a certain um, aesthetic from the past. So it's quite different. 
but um, I, th I think it's interesting to I have this kind of both uh, yeah. uh, work even in the in the car in the car uh, design I love to design very futuristic shape mm -hmm. but I prefer also the um, the vintage shape the shape from the past it's a uh, it's beautiful the, the car from the past what they did yeah. you cannot do that anymore so mm -hmm. um, so I have this kind of both uh, yeah uh, way both yeah. sides. Yeah. Both sides, yeah. Andrea Furlan, uh, it has been a pleasure to have you here at Indie Talks, uh, founder of Furlan Mary brand. Thank you, Alfonso. Here you have us. I hope to see you soon here in Madrid or in Barcelona. Yes. Thank you so much, Alfonso. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.